There's mac and cheese, there's peanut butter and jelly, but the best marriage ever, beer and chicken wings. I'm gonna show you how to turn a cheap macro brew into a tasty micro brew with just a few drops of this. Looking for a good Belgian beer? We found some you'll definitely want to try out at Aston Abbey in Delaware County. All this and more in this edition of What's Brewing. What's Brewing? Brought to you in part by Monco Makers. Powered by the Valley Forge Tours and Board. Download the app. Partial funding provided through a grant from the Pennsylvania Malt and Beverage Industry Board. Welcome to What's Brewing. He's Joe Sixpack, noted beer authority. <laughs> I'm Glenn Mack now. I just like to drink beer, but this is our weekly show talking about all nature of craft beer, drinking it, making it, where to find it, where to shop for it here in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And we are starting today, we like to have a beer swap every week. We're starting today by talking about New England IPAs. Call them hoppy, call them hazy. They are crazy and they're here to stazy. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's a big trend and it's one that I really enjoy. Uh, I, I'm enjoying it too, although, you know, I, I, I still like a beer that's a little bit uh, clearer looking, frankly. Mm -hmm. And New, New England ice, uh, style IPAs are known for their haziness. Yep. Uh, that helps uh, with the body. Uh, they're not filtered, so they, they, it has more of a mouthfeel. And unlike uh, other IPAs, which tend to be a little bit more bitter, New England style IPAs are more about the flavor of the hops. A lot of times it's juicy, right. uh, so like almost like orange juice. Yep, takes out some of the hops, and it is and I and I do uh, take some of the bitterness. Excuse right. me, that is why I like it. So I brought you one that I enjoy, Free Will Brewing Micro Manager. Joe Sixpack, you say you've never tried this. I've one. not had this. So I'm eager for you to try it. It is from uh, Percocy, Free Will Brewing in Percocy, and it's fairly low uh, alcohol for an IPA. It, it's just 4.5 percent, so it's uh, it's it's a good session. Uh, IPA. Yeah, low alcohol IPA that's been around for a while and so it's only natural that there would be a low alcohol uh, New England style IPA and you can see just the cloudiness yes. in this. Yes, and this I love beer. the cloudiness. Very lemony, grapefruity, oh, wow. a little a candy of, yep. sugar kind of t smell to it, right? Crisp, a little light in body for my flavor yeah. on my palate. Um, Very grapefruity. But, uh, not a bad little beer. Uh, Free Will makes a lot of really nice beers. Uh, they've gotten to be known for their sour beers, but they still make a pretty decent IPA. This is hopped with a hops called Equinot, yeah. which I have not really heard of before. Uh, and it's also got Mosaic, Cascade, and Centennial. Um, I enjoy it, and, and it is, to me, I, again, I like the New England IPAs, it is your lawnmower beer. You can drink a lot of it yeah, and not worry could. about it. Uh, and those hops that you mentioned are big. I mean, there's so many new hop varieties out there, and this is a way to express the hop, which is t sort of the spice of beer, uh, but we're seeing so many new uh, varieties, and it's nice to try different flavors of, of, of these hops. All right, stop talking. What you got All right, me? I will. I've got Big Hoppa from Manny Young Brewing. This is the other end of the spectrum. This is an imperial or double. Double IPA Ooh. again, another cloudy one. I believe it's nine percent alcohol. Uh, so uh, hold on to your pants. So when you say unfiltered, right? These are unfiltered, and you can clearly see. You see the haze. What does that mean? All right. So ever since the Germans really moved to the forefront of brewing uh, in the 1800s, the the idea was to have a beer that was clear. They wanted a crisp, really clean-looking beer. That's partly because of glassware. Before we had glasses, we didn't see what the beer looked like. Then once we had glasses, people wanted big, attractive beers. And so one of the ways to make a beer clearer is through filtering the beer. You run it through a filter or yeah. other ways of, of, of removing the, uh, the sediment that's in beer. I'll tell you, I like these. 
This one clearly, a doubled alcohol rate, has got much more of a yeah. kick to it. Yeah. Uh, these started uh, becoming popular in Vermont, right? New England, yeah. Hetty Topper. Yeah, that those was, were the ones that started it. That was the big first one, I think, uh, was that Hetty Topper from The Alchemist. And people really went nuts about it because it did have like this new sort of like feel, mouth feel, which has yeah. been an important part of your beer appreciation, but a lot of hop aroma too. Right. We well, just have a minute. What are, you brought some other ones. What do we got? I did. These some uh, other local beers or these are some PA other beers that we like. Exactly. So the, and these are all New England IPAs. This is Aces from mm -hmm. Urban Village. Okay. Uh, a nice uh, brewery up in uh, Northern Liberties in a Philadelphia section. Ah, and Jabone. Yeah, this is ours here at Conchock and Brewing Company. Brewing big seller. Came out this summer. People really like it. And 2SP has third anniversary New England IPA. They always make good stuff. Yep. They always make good stuff. So trendy or here to stay? I think they're here to stay. Uh, they, for the first time ever, were in the Great American Beer Festival, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Uh, they got judged, and uh, I think that once it, you know, it's regarded as a, a style at the GABF, then it's here to stay. All right, so there you go, New England IPAs. We like them. They are hazy, they are fruity, they are cloudy, and you know what? They are delicious. Coming up. The greatest marriage of food and liquid as we talk about wings and beer, right here on What's Brewing. So if we're going to do a show about beer, we cannot do this show without discussing the food that matches the best with beer, and that is chicken wings. Joe Six Pack. We're at the Conchock and Brewing Company. I ordered up a mess of wings, different styles, and I want to talk about it because I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and Buffalo, New York was the birthplace of the wing. We don't call them buffalo wings there, just wings. <laughs> and here's the story, real quick in a nutshell. There are conflicting stories. This is one I believe. Frank and Teresa's Anchor Bar, downtown Buffalo, Teresa Bellissimo, which is a great name, one night had these jazz musicians come in late at night when she was going to close. She didn't really have any food around. They used to keep the chicken wings because that was the part that nobody ate. They essentially threw them out. Well, I can see that. I mean, there's not a whole lot of uh, meat there, in right. my opinion. She had a bunch. <laughs> she was desperate. She had ingredients on hand, hot sauce, butter, mixed them up deep fried them without any batter, and the musicians loved them, and it was born out of that. It became a sensation. And again, in my hometown, Buffalo, for years we ate them. Nationally, it became something in the 80s and 90s because of sports bars. So sports bars sh started showing um, NFL games, and they wanted to feed people cheap, get them to drink more beer. This is like popcorn at the movies. You eat wings, you drink beer, and once sports bars started showing football, it became a big thing. So what you're saying is that of all the things that Buffalo might be famous for, wings are the are most the thing. Are the thing. Hey, I think it's a great contribution to the world. <laughs> I'm very happy to be part of it. You could say that. Now, I, we ordered up wings here, and you're going to match the wings with the right kind of beer, correct? Uh, I'm going to try to. The thing is with wings is that one man's wings might be, you know, too spicy for him. So, the, you know, the, the problem with, with flavors sometimes is that, everybody reacts differently to them. So uh, we're going to give it a shot here. Uh, I, I think that, you know, beer, though, generally, no matter what, goes great with goes wings. Goes great with wings. All right, by the way, what's your, uh, what's your thoughts on the blue cheese? Uh, I'm actually pro blue cheese. Oh, yeah, then you can have that, because I, <laughs> I don't touch the stuff. I, it's vile. It's terrible. All right, so the first one we're going to start with is your standard hot wing. You know, and these are pretty spicy here. I like a hot wing. It requires much beer. Yeah, I would say that, and that's what you really want, is something that's cool, that's going to cool down the palate a little bit. Uh, and I think that in this case, I, I thought about a P Pilsner style beer, and mm -hmm. we've got one here, uh, Wacker Pilsner from Lancaster. Uh, All right, nice. So I thought we'd give that a shot here, just as a way to sort of cool off that flavor, that, that spice. So let's give it a shot. By the way, if you're watching at home, go mess up, uh, get your own wings, and uh, try some of the Wacker Pilsner. Here we go. It's good. 
pretty hot. Like a hot wing. Mm. All right. That's a nice mix. I like this because it's crisp and it's clean and it's. It is. It is. I think that uh, really Pilsner goes with a lot of good things. It's just, you know, it's standard style of beer. I like it a lot. I will say though, Glenn, mm -hmm. I'm not totally impressed by the heat factor here. What's going on? I want more heat. I think they took you for a rube. Uh. <laughs> I think they didn't want to. They didn't want to make it too spicy for you. All right. Next, this is the ESB barbecue. Uh, they use the ESB, which is an award-winning extra special bitter. You know the beer uh, here, and put it in a barbecue sauce. So if I'm having like a barbecue wing. What do you advise? Well, I was thinking something that would be a little bit nutty to go with it, a little bit more malt flavor uh, than that Pilsner, something uh, that you know would really just sort of complement that uh, okay. the barbecue sauce. So I went with the Churchville Lager mm. from the Chamonix Creek. This is actually an award-winning beer, uh, really, an, I think, just a nice go-to beer. You can see it's a little darker, uh, definitely has a nice uh, malt backbone to it. So right. let's give that a shot. There we go. Mmm, it's a fun wing. All right, I'm going to do the, uh, the, the blue cheese this time. All right, ugh. you ruined the whole thing with the blue cheese. That's a good wing. That is a nice combo. Well, I mean, you're saying the malty with the, uh, with the barbecue? Yeah, I think it's just, you know, a good way to play off a little bit of the sweetness, obviously, that barbecue sauce has. But uh, again, it doesn't uh, really take away from the flavor of the wings. Okay. Now, third, finally. Save these for later. You need a lot of these when you eat the wings, right? <laughs> you know what? The chicken wing industry probably revived these things from the dead, right? <laughs> when else do you ever use something like this? All right, the little wet nap. So, this is the sweet chili uh, chicken wings. They're done with a with a chili sauce, and they do have a little bit of sweetness. A lot of places serve wings like this these days. What matches well, Joseph? Well, Beck? I really wanted to go with uh, something that would really stand up to that flavor, but also actually might improve it a little bit. We'll see. Uh, sometimes beer flavors, they contrast or they complement. Sometimes they make something taste a little bit better. I went with the Merry Monks from Weyerbacher. Right. This is one of my I'm a big fan of Weyerbacher, always have been. It, this pairs well with a lot of different mm. foods. That's a fine one. It's a Belgian-style triple beer. Again, another award-winning beer. Hold on, I can't eat yours. Go for it. <laughs> oh, that is a nice. I like that. You get a lot of taste out of this. And it's nice with the sweet chili. By the way, wow, because people, right? That's a, that's a winner. That's a good one. That's that is a really winner. good one. A Belgian with a sweet chili wing is the way to go. One other thing. Because people have tried everything, there is a fried chicken beer that a place out of Richmond, Virginia attempted, the Vale Brewing Company and Evil Twin. They literally put chicken into the tank, I guess is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> and let it go for a couple of weeks and tried it and made fried chicken beer. As far as I know, they did it once, which tells me it wasn't Yeah, right really, out. that sounds insane, frankly. I don't think that was, uh, that was a terrific idea. All right, coming up, we are going to visit a place in Aston, which is, speaking of Belgian beers, they're making some great ones down there. You don't want to miss that. Coming up next on What's Brewing. Welcome back to What's Brewing. Joe Sixpack, we always like to see what's new going on. Right, there's a new brewery down in Delaware County that's opened up and we sent Sierra to go check it out. This is Bella and she is a brewery cat at the Aston Abbey Brewing Company. Her owners, Chuck and Sue McKenna, will be celebrating their brewery's first anniversary in late October and are known for their Belgian-style beers. Can you tell us a little bit about why you got started? What motivated you? Well, I've been home, I started home brewing in 1993. I um, 
over the past 25 years have brewed many different styles of beers. And my favorites were always the Belgians. So it was the kind of thing where, you know, you're the home brewer and the dream is always, you know, open your own brewery. And everyone talks about, these beers are great, you should open your own brewery. My lovely wife told me we needed, I needed to either do something or stop talking about it. <laughs> so we started working on this project and this is where we are. And you guys are unique with your Belgian beers. I wanted to focus on something different. Everyone has a whole bunch of IPAs on. You go into any brewery out there, you'll find six, seven, eight, sixteen IPAs. And I wanted more, something different. I wanted something that would be more, you know, outside of most people's box. And it seems to be working. A whole lot of people like the fact that we are different. We always have a quad, a triple, a double, and a wit on. Those are, the, those are four of the Belgian mainstay styles. Uh, aside from that, we have, oh, we've been rotating through a whole bunch of different beers. I think we've had over 25 other beers on. And a little bit about the Belgian styles and the name and how that's incorporated, Aston Abbey. So we decided that we wanted to go with the, na with the Abbey name because we wanted people to think of Belgian beers. Belgian beers are made in monasteries. Um, most of them are. Uh, those are the ones with the Trappist, the Trappist name and logo attached to them. We're trying to, we're not trying to be Trappist, obviously, I'm not a monk. We're <laughs> trying to uh, do more that style. We wanna make it, we wanna make the beers in those styles. So Aston Abbey alliterates very well and that's kinda how we landed on it. Okay. <laughs> we try to keep one or two IPAs on all the time because people want IPAs. And if we didn't have an IPA on, we wouldn't have, there would be people who would not want to come in. What I love doing is when someone's drinking an IPA, giving them a taste of the triple and saying, why don't you try this? Yeah. yeah. And then they try it and maybe they'll get a full pour and that always makes me feel good. So you've had some converts at your Abbey. Oh, yes. many. Yeah. <laughs> yes, a lot of people will come in and say they only drink IPAs and so we'll start them with maybe the Belgian IPA or the English IPA and then as Chuck said, just, why don't you try this, why don't you try that? And invariably their next drink is not an IPA. I'm drinking the Polyjuice Potion, and I'm a big Harry Potter fan, <laughs> so how did that come about? Well, the Polyjuice Potion is our pumpkin spice triple. We did that for our summer ween. Uh, summer ween is Halloween in the summer, and we had a whole bunch of uh, stuff outside. We had, you know, bounce house and a uh, uh, dunk tank kind of thing, and we had to have a pumpkin beer on because it's Halloween. Oh, <laughs> so we put, we put that together, and that was an homage to Harry Potter, obviously, with the Polyjuice uh, Potion name. And Harry Potter fans, <laughs> whole family. Yeah. Uh, so far we've uh, been going through a whole lot of it since we put it on on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And you guys are having, so then your birthday bash coming up soon, that's another event you guys will be having. Yeah, the, the birthday party is on Saturday, October 20th. We're gonna have a band still working out who it's gonna be. We have downtime refreshment coming out for the, as the food truck and we have got a lot of gelato coming out with ice cream, well, gelato. We have two new beers that'll be coming out. We have our Ostrakhan Russian Imperial Stout, which is a 14% Russian Imperial that was aged in Dad's Hat Rye whiskey barrels. And then we also have our Septuple, which is a Belgian style beer that is a 20%, um, it's kind of between in appearance, it's kind of between a quad and a triple in that it's not quite as light as a triple, not quite as dark as a quad, but it has a whole lot of um, date and raisin and plum in the, in the taste. It's, it's phenomenal and I can't wait to, uh, to get it out there to people. Our goal over the next year is to purchase a larger brew house. Right now we're brewing on a one and a quarter barrel brew house, which is, which is tiny. We don't have enough beer to can, to bottle, to distribute much at all. and that is really hobbling us. That's the one thing that's slowing us down. So we're looking to expand very soon. So Bella helps out here at the brewery. Bella is actually more of a superstar here than anyone else. <laughs> she has quite the following. She's the brewery cat, so her goal is to keep away the critters, um, which we don't have any, so she just really brings her own audience. We had a birthday party for her last oh. year, <laughs> and we, it was, People brought her presents. People it brought her so presents. Funny. It was funny. <laughs> we had the gelato truck here that day as well, and we put some catnip on some gelato for her, and she sat through everybody singing her happy birthday. <laughs> it was it was funny. It's been quite a ride. It's been fun. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, thank you, Sierra. That looks terrific. All right, Joe Sixpack, other big news recently, the Great American Beer Fest. Always yeah. a big time. Biggest awards of the year, and a number of local breweries brought back awards throughout Pennsylvania. Uh, the big one was uh, the folks from Root Down Brewing in Phoenixville. Tiny spot. I know you're familiar with the yeah. place. They were named the Mid-Size Brew Pub of the Year, which is wow. fantastic. So yeah. much going on in Phoenix. I know. They, Good for them. They won two awards out there for their uh, Bine, which is a gold medal, and and they also won another one for their Goza style beer. So our beer, uh, Salty by Nature, was called. Mm -hmm, good. Uh, there was also a number of other local breweries. Iron Hill, great folks there. They have been good winning, for them, man. They've been winning beer uh, awards for 22 consecutive Is years. That right? It's astonishing. Wow. It's uh, impressive. They, they won again uh, out at their media place for their uh, aged beer category, Souls and Eatson. <laughs> Great name for How a Russian. People even know old Russian dissident. Who yes, knows that? Exactly. Okay. There were a couple other nearby winners, including uh, Village Idiot won a silver for their Belgian triple. They're over in Mount Holly, New Jersey. And down the shore, Slack Tide, one of my favorites, won a bronze for their Avalon Amber Ale. Uh, also winning awards was Two Rivers up in Easton. Yeah. Uh, they won for their Banger Slate. Uh, Baltic Porter style, one of my favorite styles of beer. Good, I've enjoyed their stuff. And Oryx out in Western Pennsylvania also won for their Blonde Ale, a gluten-free beer, by the way. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest with well, you, principal, but good for them and good <laughs> for the, the wheat haters out there, good for them. All right, well, that's good, and that's good news. Coming up, not every beer is that good, so Joe Sixpack is gonna tell you how to turn an ordinary bland beer into something special right here on What's Brewing. Welcome back to What's Brewing. We are shooting today at the Concha Hawk and Brewing Company Brew Pub in Bridgeport. A nice active lunch crowd today. Now, we go over great beers. That's what we do here. That's right. Okay, but Joe Sixpack, sometimes you get an average beer. I'm going to bring you my favorite average beer, Miller High Life. I've been drinking this my whole life. Well, the champagne of beer. Since I was legal. Anyway, it is the <laughs> champagne of bottled beer. Great. If you've got the time, we've got the I always respected Miller High Life. Um, but I might want to make it better because it's just your basic, you know, American beer. So how can I possibly make this beer any better? Well, I've got the, the uh, secret here. Don't pour them all there, Glenn, uh, yet, because uh, I want to uh, do this properly. I brought along something called Mad Hops uh, Flavored Beer Drops. Flavored Beer Drops? Right. I, I'm skeptical. All right, so this is supposed to be the solution mm -hmm. to... Uh, Dull beer. Okay. Okay. So we squirt a little bit of this into a glass. Oh, I see. That goes in first. Right, right. Oh, all right. Because you got to get it up. I understand. All right, okay. so give this a shot because this is a pale, I'm sorry, a Northwest IPA flavored here. And you can see immediately the color change. Oh, look at this. Okay, so here's the original. That actually does. And here's look, what you got. It does. It, it looks it perfectly looks like great. Actually. All right, let's find out how it tastes. So it's supposed to make it taste like what? Yeah, it's supposed to be like a Northwest IPA, like say like a Sierra Nevada. Oh God, I don't know. I don't get the aroma bit. out of this. I may one. not have done the balance correct. It's a little, uh, it's a little hefty. Now you know what they it do like say. Tastes like a can of syrup. All right, so oh, maybe let's try another one. Let's tone it back. All right. I got also. Let's see. They have a ton of flavors. How about amber, apple amber? I like an All amber. Right. All right, we're gonna go with a really short shot here this okay. time. So you just okay. carry this in your pocket to like the tailgate where you figure the people are going to not have terrific beer. Exactly, right? exactly. And then you just kind of put it in. This goes in first. Where is this out of this stuff? Uh, actually, I just got it online. It's okay. at... Uh, it's out of Amazon. Yeah, gomadhops.com. All right, go, so this is my amber ale. I mean, it's, you know... Actually, that smells... I get a little, little darker. I get a little apple out of it. Mm, yeah, I do. You know what? That's not hideous. All right. 
That one was pretty good. I think I may have overdone it with the IPA. That's not bad. By the way, this beer has been around since 1903. So I was reading when they used to make, you know, beer back in the day, it guy you couldn't it wasn't in bottles. Guys brought it home from the tavern in a wooden pail. Kind of your prototype growler, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And it wouldn't stay. When they figured out how to put this in in bottles, it became like one of the biggest best-selling beers forever. And I remember into the 70s, it was considered almost a high-end beer. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. The yeah. champagne of beers, that's where, you know, you, it, it distinguishes itself. I got another one here. Let's try it. All right. This is going to be a real test here, Glenn. Right. Gonna, we're going to turn a simple light lager uh -huh. into a porter. No, yeah. I'm, An I don't Irish know about porter. that. All right. <laughs> All right, well, well <laughs> it, it did get the well, color. I may have overdone that. it. And no, nice there you go. Too. Yeah, it does. How nice. much of this is just food dye and how much of this is actual Good question. Stuff? Well, we'll see on this one with the flavor. Okay. Should give us a little bit of roastiness, hopefully. Okay. I smell a lot of caramel here, like a yeah. sweet thing. You know what I got to say? It's not awful. I'm it's really not bad. You take this beer and turn it into something different. I was dubious. I don't hate it. Let's see what else it do we have works. here. Mexican lime. Ooh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> that one I'm not so sure. Cherry wheat. You want to try another one? I'm going to grab us a couple more glasses right, wild here. Wild blueberry. What do you want? I want the wild blueberry. Right, you go with the wild blueberry. Enough, right, enough. enough. <laughs> I'm going to have a little Mexican lime. We'll wrap this thing up. Here's for you. Here's for me. Oh, look at that. Yes. The wild blueberry looks like blueberry. There you go. Okay. Pretty cool. Look at the color of that. It looks great. Oh, God, that's horrible. That's really hideous. Don't go with the... Well, I see, I wouldn't drink like a lime marita or right. anything anyway. I wouldn't drink that kind of beer. The blueberry's not too bad. Is that right? Yeah. I, the winner to me is with the porter. I think that's actually pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. So mixed reviews for this. Yeah. Better than I thought. I, I agree. I, uh, you know, I was dubious, and they sent me all the flavors, and you can get them online again at GoMadHops.com. All right. So as we do this show each week, one of the things we're having a good time with is our 16, our Pennsylvania bracket of the top 16 IPAs. You can go online and vote for it on our What's Brewing Facebook page. And uh, what do you got for this week? We're doing one, one or one a week. All right, we're doing the Western region of IPAs, uh -huh. and we matched up Voodoo Hoodoo. Okay. Great name versus Erie Misery Bay IPA. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Well, from the I've West. I've lived on Lake Erie. I know the misery. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I'm not sure if that's where they got their name. Okay. At any rate, Voodoo Hot Hoodoo. Voodoo Hoodoo won 75 percent to 25 percent. Wow. All right. So they move on to the eight, and we will crown at the end of this, the greatest IPA in Pennsylvania. Hey, that's going to do it for us. Remember, you can follow us on our Facebook page, What's Brewing, and on Twitter, and we always love your feedback. Tell your friends. Have them watch, and we will see you next week with Joe Sickpack. I'm Glenn Macnow on What's Brewing. What's Brewing, brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism Board. Download the app. Partial funding provided through a grant from the Pennsylvania Malt and Beverage Industry Board.